Uh, I'm Dr Nick Lund, I'm working at the Cheshire Faculty. I teach psychology but I'm also one of the senior learning teaching fellows at the faculty. What I was trying to do was to devise some form of assessment which, or some form of feedback which was both effective and efficient for the marker. We've got conflicting demands, students want lots of feedback and lots of detail. Staff have lots of students to give feedback to. And so there's, a, there's usually a conflict between those two and I wanted to try and make sure they could do both, that something was efficient for the student and, sorry, efficient for the staff, but uh, effective for the students. The solution that I had is that, first of all, I used to use an electronic marking system from um, Phil Denton. From, he devised a system which is free for everyone to use. And to use it, you have to produce a number of criteria which you mark against. So for something like a psychology report, I had a number of criteria for different sections of the report, so criteria for um, the abstract, 0% for no abstract, up to 100% for uh, an outstanding, excellent one, uh, and for each of the sections, and each one of those was weighted and so on. Unfortunately, the um, Phil Denton system for me didn't work one year, so I had a device, a slightly different system, where I used the criteria, but I put them all onto WebCT, so the students had access to all the criteria. So instead of getting feedback about each one of those sections saying, you know, for an abstract, you've got, uh, say, 50% because, and so on, and giving the feedback, they had the criteria for 0%, up to 10, 10 to 20. They had all the criteria. And so that they had, for every section, they had all the criteria they could look at from 0 to 100. When I then gave feedback, I simply gave them the marks for each of those sections with an overall comment because otherwise it makes it far too impersonal and then the marks for each one of those sections and the students then took that mark and went to the um, WebCT file and looked to see where their marks fit so if there was 6% they'd have a description of what 60% represented and what I did was to encourage them to look at the mark bands below and above. So they got the grade comment for their mark, and they could then match against their, their section. So if they had 50% for their introduction, they could look at the introduction and say, well, why is it only 50%? Why, why haven't I got a higher mark? But then they had the grade comment for 60% and above, or 70% and above, and they could look at those and to see why their introduction wasn't matching that. Um, that meant that with just a small comment and a few marks, students were getting a very detailed feedback, which then made it effective for them and very efficient for me because I was just producing a small comment about their work and then the marks which they could mark, uh, match against the criteria on Moodle. So that made it efficient and effective. I also tried out a third E, I don't know whether <laughs> there's a theme coming out here, which to make it engaging uh, and to make sure the students engage with it, I asked them to not only look at the marks and look at the grade description, but to challenge it, and to look at it and think, well, I don't agree with that. And so, and I said, if you don't, really don't agree, then I set aside tutorial times for them to come, come see me and to say why they think that the mark they had was the wrong one. And that, in some ways, was the most useful use of the system because they would uh, look at the marks and say, well, I think my introduction should be 60%. And that gave me the opportunity to explain why it wasn't. I think in the first year I used it, about 10 students come to see me and said, you've given me a very low mark for my references. I don't understand why my references is good. And it wasn't. Their references were very poor. And these were students towards the end of the second year. And they had comments all the way through saying that your referencing, you need to you know, review your referencing. But never done anything about it. When they were asked to challenge the marks, they suddenly realised that out of all the marks they had in the reference section, they were only getting, they were getting a fail, less than 40%. Now they came to challenge it. And it was at this stage that I could explain to them why their references wasn't good. They'd never actually taken up the feedback before. This time they were engaged in the feedback because they were allowed to challenge it and come to me. I think the final reason that I'd like this, and one of the reasons which one of the external examiners like it, is that the marking becomes increasingly transparent. And I think the transparency is a really useful 
thing to have in, well, not useful, it's an essential element of marking that the students should have. They should know exactly what the marks will be given and why, and to understand it. When I was at university, a lot of the marking and assessment was mysterious, and sometimes, you know, you get high marks or low marks and not really understand why. With this sort of system, students know exactly why their marks are high or low. I originally did it for reports in psychology because it's easily broken down into different sections and, and marks for different sections. But it's been adapted for other sorts of work. Um, so other people have done it for essay work, for um, uh, reports, and for other sorts of reports as well. And each time it's been used, it's been adapted and added to, really. So this is just the start of the system. My colleague uh, Tony Hare, for example, has used it for the students, but also has added the learning outcomes as part of the ass assessment feedback. So it's an, an evolving system, I think, which is being used according to the needs of each assessment. You can find more Good Practice Exchange films and resources on our website. Visit kelp.mmu.ac.uk forward slash good underscore practice. Thanks for watching.